For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Vicmon machine language monitor cartridge to create a program which will simulate a teletype terminal on the VIC-20. Once the cartridge is attached and the VIC is powered on, we enter the monitor. I want to take over the kernel's char out subroutine. This routine outputs the character that it finds in the accumulator. As each kernel subroutine is accessed via a jump table, I'll look at the char out location, FFD2, to see what it does. We can see here that this is an indirect jump to the location held at 0326. If we now look at the value at 0326, we can see the first two bytes are 7A F2. The 6502 is Little Endian, so it stores its least significant byte first, and hence this is address F27A. The program we are going to write will alter the address at 0326 to point it to our routine, which will make a sound when a printable character is to be output. Once the sound has been output, it will jump to F27A, which will print the character and return to the point where the subroutine was called. So that this code doesn't interfere with BASIC, we'll put it in the cassette buffer located at 033C. The cassette buffer is 191 bytes long, and therefore has plenty of room for our routine. This will of course mean that if you read or write to the tape once the routine is loaded, you will lose it and probably hang the machine. We'll start entering the code at location 033C using the A command to assemble. The code we're entering is in two parts. The first part changes the output vector to point to the second part and sets the volume to maximum by altering location 900E. You can see that there is a forward reference pointing to the start of the second piece of code. We don't know the true address of this yet, so we'll enter 55 and come back to replace it when we know what the correct value should be. The second part is the routine which will take over the char out command to output a noise and then jump to the original output vector at F27A. First we save the character to be printed to the stack. We then test for either a space or a return character. If either are found, we skip making a noise. Otherwise a noise is output by setting the pitch for speaker 2 at 900B 280. Here you can see my going back to alter the forward references. The next piece of code creates two delays, one before the speaker is turned off, so that the noise is held for a small amount of time, the second so that there is a gap between noises. Since we'll be using the X and Y registers, we'll push them to the stack before the delay loops, and then pull them back once we're finished with them. We're doing this because the char out routine doesn't alter these registers, so we must follow suit. Finally, we can see the jump to the original output vector that location 0326 normally points to. If we change location 0326 to point to 034C, then our routine will be called before the kernel routine. To start with, you won't be able to hear anything, so we will need to set the volume to max by changing location 900E. By doing a disassembly of our program, you can see the simulated TTY effect in its full glory. Note that the address after the last instruction of our routine is 037F. This is important when it comes to saving our code. We'll save our program at 033C to a file called FateTTY on disk device 8. When using the S command, remember to use the last address plus 1 to indicate the end of memory to save, hence the reason that we are using 037F, as noted before. You can exit the monitor and return to BASIC using the X command. To demonstrate that this is saved properly, we'll power cycle the VIC and load the program back from disk. Run the first part of the program which will point the output vector to our code. 
828 is the decimal equivalent of 033C. To check that this works, we'll now say hello to the world. So there you have it. By inspecting the memory containing the program, it would be easy to convert these values to decimal and put them in a basic data statement. All you would need to do then is load them into the correct location and sift to the machine code. If you are interested in similar articles or videos, please subscribe to the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel and visit techtinkering.com.